GFCI outlets are designed to protect you from getting an electrical shock if they're exposed to water. But what would happen if you didn't have one of these outlets and you say you got water inside? Well, that's exactly what one of my viewers asked me, so I decided to put it to the test to find out what would happen if a regular outlet was exposed to water. And the tests you'll see in this video are pretty extreme and I was blown away by the results. And do not try any of the tests that I did in this video yourself. All of them are hazardous, you could die, and electricity and water do not mix. And even though you can't see it on the video, I had help behind the scenes to make sure that I was safe the entire time. I'm not going to reveal any of those details because I don't recommend that anyone try any of these tests themselves. For my first test, I connected an extension cord into a regular outlet with no GFCI protection. Then I plugged in this power strip, and I added the egg beater so that you could tell the power was on, and started to spray it. And even though I missed the first couple of shots, I finally started to get the water right into the outlets, but nothing happened. Now at this point, I thought this test was going to end pretty quick, and the breaker would in fact trip. And then I really started to spray that thing, and there was no change at all in the egg beater, and the circuit breaker never tripped. I really couldn't believe it at this point, so I decided to take this test a step further, and I filled up a container with water, grabbed that power strip, and dropped it right in. Now first, nothing changed at all, but you can see that the strip kind of got hung up on the side. So I gave it a push, and now the thing was completely submerged. How is this possible? This is completely nuts that the egg beater is still running, the power strip is fine. In fact, you can even see the lights on the strip working just fine underneath the water. And one thing did go wrong. I got a FedEx delivery right in the middle of this experiment, so I had to disconnect everything to grab the package. And once they left, I plugged everything back in, and there were no problems at all. Egg beater's running, power strip is on, and everything's good. After the test was over, I started thinking maybe I needed something bigger under the water that would actually trip that circuit breaker sooner. So I grabbed a fish tank, filled it up full of water, along with a simple plug-in light. Now that isn't an LED bulb, it's a regular 100 watt incandescent bulb, and you can see it works just fine out of the water. And once I submerge it, nothing changes at all. The bulb is still working just fine. But the bulb is also acting kind of like a life preserver, so I needed to weight it down. So I grabbed a brick and I put it on top of the power strip so that it would be completely submerged. And you can see that there was still no change in the light at all. In fact, it looks better under the water than it does outside. I don't really know why that bulb looks different like that, some type of optical illusion. At this point, I'm completely blown away. How is this stuff working fine underwater without any problems at all? So now we're gonna do the final test. I'm taking this regular toaster, loading it up with some bread, and I'm gonna put it underneath the water to see what happens. There's one problem. I can't get the bread to stay down until the thing has power. Now right now, there's no electricity in the tank at all. And as you can see, my bread idea didn't work out so well. But I plugged in the toaster underwater, which is a pretty strange feeling, and then I went ahead and connected the whole thing back up. And of course, everything's working great. Why wouldn't it? We're only underwater. But that toaster is still not on, and that's the key. So to turn it on, I need to push that plunger down, and I'm certainly not going to put my hand on the tank. So using this piece of plastic lumber, I was able to engage that plunger to get the toaster to turn on. And I had no idea what was going to happen, because that toaster uses 1,200 watts of power. But as you can see, the little bubbles coming out tell me those heating elements are actually on. And then finally, after about 10 minutes, this is what happened. This is absolutely ridiculous. I almost couldn't believe what I had seen, so I repeated the same test, but this time I'm going to use a GFCI protected outlet. I poured just a small amount of water into the strip, and within just a few seconds the breaker tripped and did its job. So after I finished all these tests, I learned one thing, and that's that GFCI outlets definitely work and they will protect you against any kind of electrocution when you're around water and electricity. But the most important takeaway is that you have no protection at all using a regular outlet if you should get any water in it or around it. So I highly recommend always following your electric codes and using GFCI outlets in any location that might get wet or be exposed to any kind of moisture. And remember that even though those appliances worked underwater, that water was fully electrified and if anybody put their hand in it, they would be electrocuted and likely die. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up.